Holy crap, dude! Well, I can't even get him over the side. Chris Doyle and myself. Hooked up, baby. And the boys from Southern Fortune. Whoa, that's a monster, Chris. Crossed over to Grand Cave, Bahamas. Holy crap, I need a gap. Let me tell you guys, see what we just got, baby. This was one of the most epic trips I've ever been on. Whoa, bro. <laughs> I caught a personal best. No way, dude, keep that camera rolling. And I'm taking you guys along with me. Have you guys seen anything like that before? <laughs> Christopher Doyle. It's the loading part, baby. We gotta get this cooler in the boat. It's got a forklift so we can actually lift it up with the forklift. We're using these carts right here, which makes life easy. So here's my cart Oh stuff. So we just roll that out to the boat. I brought it down here from upstairs. That door upstairs, that's our offices up there. This is HQ, guys. This is where all of our packing and shipping at Johnny Jigs Tackle Company. Oh gosh, look out. All right guys, about to launch off. We just made out the inlet. It's a little chilly, so we're gonna put on our foul weather gear. Trailered from Pompano up to Jensen Beach. It's, it's just a better shot um, across. It saves us approximately like 30 miles running by boat to get over to the part of the Bahamas that we're going to, which is the northern end of the Bahamas. Chris and I are just kind of gearing up here. We're gonna plot our chart and we've got everything plugged in from our phones, Navionics. We've got Navionics on the screen here so we know exactly where we're going. We're gonna probably run somewhere between 30 and 40 miles an hour. We got a three hour journey. We're gonna take you guys with us. Let's get it. Well guys, we've arrived and now we just need to figure out where it is exactly that we're going. You gotta be so careful coming into these islands because there's just shallow areas, rocks and stuff, things that are not marked. I like to just go slow until I got a good solid track of where I'm going and what I'm doing and then I know I can boogie because I've been down it. But we're gonna make our way onto this island. We're gonna meet up with a guy named Ishmael, and he's gonna hook us up. Officially, we've arrived. We're at the dock. I gotta go check in. I've got our passports. Plus, I picked up a uh, cruising permit. See if you guys can see this cruising permit, and that will save us some time checking in on the passport. This is it, boys. Our accommodations, Christopher Doyle. Not bad. No, not too shabby. We got a full kitchen. So we never did rendezvous with our boys from Southern Fortune, but they will be here shortly. I heard just down the island here, there's a place called Rosie's that they're playing the Miami Dolphins game. So I'm gonna go catch that over there. Yeah, All right, good. guys, Southern Fortune boys are here. We got Joey, Woo! Chris. What's up? Mr. Grady right yes, there. Yes, sir. Woo! And Dustin? Yep, Dustin. In back. Dustin's got a mangrove. Oh, look at He just got a mangrove. Go get him. Go get him. Chris. Oh my God, Joe, four pounder. We're about to follow our boys, Joey, Matt, Chris, and Dustin from Southern Fortune Fishing Tournaments out on the water. I'm going to put a link below, guys, for the Southern Fortune Fishing Guys. It's a killer tournament that was all year long. You can make a bunch of money doing it. Our uh, dearest Christopher Doyle got a little token as well as $1,000 for his prize winning last year. We're going to try and kill some fish. We'll see you guys on the water. All right, guys, let's see if they're picking up what I'm putting down. So I'm going to kick off with our 600 gram torpedo jig. I have six O's, Johnny Jigs single six O's on the top and the bottom. And what you can see here, I do have a ball bearing swivel connected to the top. That's a number five Johnny Jigs ball bearing. And then also a number five split ring connecting both. So, and what I'm gonna drop this down with today is our Seaborg 300J. And then this is going to be the newest line 
of Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger rods. Pro Jigger means that that's our high-end version of items and this one is a power six. We have tested it extensively on the water. This will work a 800 gram jig beautifully. It's definitely got a sweet spot within that six, 700 gram range. So we're pretty deep. We're in almost a thousand feet of water. So we're hoping to drop down and possibly pull up some yellow eye snapper, maybe some grouper. This is definitely my go-to jig of choice because it resembles a squid the most. So when in deep water, I know you bait fishermen understand that. That's the Southern Fortune boys. This guy will definitely imitate a squid. So let's drop some jigs and see what happens. Let's see it boys. Yes sir. Are we allowed to keep snowy? No. No? No, but that's a mystic. I've decided to switch it up to manual. I'm actually drop in my uh, Maxell Rage 90 now. This is the prototype rod. This is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful high-end rod. We're in a spot that's known for queen snappers. Let's see if we can get one. All right, we're on 950 feet. We really took a second to explore and inspect this bottom topography. Thanks to Seymour Maps, Bahamas Chip, and a really, really good contour. And we, we explored kind of the whole ridge line and got to where it started and it also branched off. And uh, because we're just, you know, Bahamas, such light current here, boat kind of nestled right into the corner of this thing. And I just said to Johnny, I really like where we're at. Uh, screen wasn't too heavy, really with any marks or any significant bottom terrain, but just by the mapping, you can tell that uh, we were in pretty good spot. And uh, 950 feet down, few bounces on the bottom, few quarter crank pulls, and I got some pretty good pressure on a fish. Weed snapper, baby. Yeah. yeah. Baby. Look at that, dude. First queenie weenie on the Johnny Jigs vessel. We wanted to check that one off the box. Check, baby. He's still a little. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you say lady in red? There is a Bahamian queen snapper. Again, same thing, same philosophy with the all glow torpedo. I'm at 500 gram and 950 feet, but resembles a squid. Bottom hook, corner of the mouth, top hook is just, she's a dangling. Ah, well, this isn't just any queen snapper, this is a Bahamian queen snapper and really a nice one at that uh not that we have all the experience in the world but i think these things kind of max out around 15 pounds generally here in the bahamas they're not quite like those 20 pound plus pulley ridge queen snapper you see us pulling up but uh this right here is i'm very happy to have this fish on the boat because the johnny jigs boat hailing out of pompano beach florida has not put a queen snapper on the deck until today so you're the first and we love you for it. All right, send them back, Chris. No! <laughs> well guys, just a very subtle hit. It's my first hit on the manual deep drop outfit. It's a long ways down. We're approximately 970 feet. I feel like I'm getting pretty close here. It wasn't a huge hit, just something very subtle. Almost felt like sludge. Oh, yellow eye snapper just got off. Ran into boat. What'd you guys get? Yellow eye. Uh, we're back up. Well, we could definitely make another drop right in that corner area. Man, you gotta think, whenever you take a trip like this, figure, you know, you're, you're going 120 miles, you're gonna burn almost $1,000 in fuel, plus a place to stay, plus all the gear and the line and everything that goes into it the prep work on a prayer that you're gonna catch fish. So whenever you spend that much funds and energy and, you know, kissing the wife and kids goodbye as you leave, cause you're gonna miss them. And you come out here and have a successful trip. It's all worth it. All right, there's a nice yellow eye. I absolutely love these fish. Hey. Another tiny queen. 
some guy got binoculars on us. Your mom is a tiny queen. Glad you boys are paying attention. He just likes the feel of the gunnel between his legs. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go, Chris. You got a grouper, baby. Oh, Mystic, bro. Yes, sir. Look at that. Alrighty then. Look at that. Old convict. The old convict grouper. You can tell by the stripes. It's kind of cute. <laughs> The fish felt a little, a little bigger than that. Came up with his mouth open. Yeah. What's up, baby? Johnny Dick, huh? Didn't know there was Jack here. I've only caught grouper in this place, and it's snapper. Oh, uh, we caught Jack here. Hey, Alvaco. Here he is, guys. I'm Co Jack in the Bahamas. So guys, I was way up in the water column because I saw some fish up top. Yes, I see him. Get the gaff. Stick him. Stick him, Chris. Oh, Kuda. Hooked all funky. Just a squirrel fish. These guys are uh, poisonous. So we're going to be careful on hooking him. He got spines and poison. We don't want none of that. See ya. Could be a quality fishing area. Well, I think we should find that out for ourselves. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm hooked up. I got a big one. You're getting a saltiga bent. Yep. Got to put a little more heat on. Got to be a grouper, right? Right. I mean, to be rocked up like that, yeah. I'm gonna hit him hard. You ready? It's gone. Wow. One of the hooks been straight. What do we got? Yellow eye, baby. Yellow eye snapper, 950 feet down. Wow. wow. Just about as big as he is. Yeah, so a fish like that, I mean, I felt him bouncing about halfway up, but by no means did I, I feel the strike. But you feel, you know the weight of your jig. You get it, you get a really good feel for the weight of your jig. That jig gets heavier. You probably got a fish on, so get tight and bring them up. Hooked up, baby. We're hooked up. I got, I'm on a big fish, man. Big fish in 869 feet. He is not turning. Whoa, that's a monster, Chris. I need to gain on this fish. That's a big fish, Chris. Oh, yeah. Gaining on him now. <laughs> oh. Guys, I just put a ton of pressure on this fish and then I just got him off the bottom. He had me majorly rocked up down there. I was almost at the point of giving up. You see that he's still fighting me, pulling a little bit of drag, but uh, he's up now. Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh, I need to wiggle my battery. Wiggle it until it comes on. Yep. Good, good, good. I'm here. All right, guys, welcome to the Bahamas. This fish had me rocked up like I've never been rocked up before. And uh, I gave him the old Yankee cap, play the guitar on the string. And he came, he poked his head out. I got him off the bottom now. So now I'm just kind of easing this fish in. I got the electric going. We're sitting in almost a thousand feet. We're very deep, so the electric is a necessary evil. But, oh look, there goes my old Yankee cap place. 
I'm glad that's back on my reel. Your splice? <laughs> I forgot that was on oh, here. Shoot. Six. Guys, so this is a Power 6 Pro Jigger rod. This is our Seaborg 300J. Ooh, he's going the other way on me a little bit. And this thing is working a 600 gram jig incredibly. Now it's all about the finesse, dude. So, you know, you feel a fish thumping, you feel the rod tip moving, and then all of a sudden it kind of becomes a stalemate. And then you realize that you're rocked up, you know, and that, that non-movement and just staying in one place, you realize that after the fish was gripping drag, he was able to lodge himself into a rock, and then all of a sudden you're not gaining on the fish. So a few tricks that we use whenever a fish rocks himself up, one is go slack on him. Let him feel like he's good to go, nothing to worry about, and then you hammer him really fast. You reel as quickly as you can to try and tug him out of the hole. It doesn't always work out. Next move is you can move the boat at different angles to try and pull him out of the hole. And then the third thing that I do is play the string like a guitar. For some reason, it seems to irritate the fish and I've seen many come out of the hole and so I'm a believer, it definitely works. I think we busted out all three on this fish. We did. It took everything. I had an immense amount of pressure just trying to get this fish out of the hole down there. I mean, it was like everything I had in me. And uh, this fish is gonna float up way out there somewhere. Oh, look out there, the bubbles! Look at the bubbles out there! Look at that! Look at the bubbles! Whoa! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes! It is definitely my personal best whatever this fish is. <laughs> that is a monster a misty. misty. <laughs> Holy crap, I need a gap. Holy cow. Wait till you guys see what we just got, baby. Oh, my word. That is the biggest damn group I've ever caught in my life. Holy cow, dude. Whoa, bro. Yeah, dude. Holy crap, dude. I can't even get him over the side. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta fix this. No way, dude, keep that camera rolling. Have you guys seen anything like that before? Whoa! <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah! <laughs> what in the world? just happened we don't have a cooler big enough chris let me tell you guys something this is why i love jigging man and you never give up on that fish when he rocks you up <laughs> yeah! yeah baby Woo! mystic grouper boys that is the biggest damn grouper i've ever caught in my life holy smokes <sighs> We gotta take some pictures. <laughs> All right guys, we're back on land. We're gonna pull out some of the smaller fish and then the big guy out with our forklift, but just some yellow eyes. A couple of nice yellow eyes. Chris's mystic grouper. Chris's beautiful queen snapper. Blackfin tuna, which I did do eco Jimmy right there and so we're gonna take these guys over to the flay table and then we're gonna pull the big boy out with the forklift through his gills and out his mouth he says ah all right all right wrap it around the fork and then I'm gonna lift it up. Alright. Maybe tie a bowling, can you do that? Or I'm thinking maybe a flow pitch might be adequate. Yeah. A bunch of flow pitches. I still gotta get the scale on them afterwards. There he is, baby. 
Gotcha. I go this way. Yeah, well, yeah, either way there's a hole. Yep. Yeah, perfect. That's it boys. For those who don't believe it. It's 80 baby. 80.4? 80.4. Yeah. Remember, I don't like doing big manual labor guy. Oh, that was so easy. Guys, I have never filleted a grouper this big, so I'm gonna give it my best shot, but I wanted to show you guys what the flesh looks like. If they're still good at this size, um, whether they have parasites. I don't know. I don't know what this fish has, but I'd like to show you guys just the teeth that this guy has right here. Those can easily bite through an assist cord. Those can definitely, definitely crunch through an assist cord. They're all pointed inwards, and that way whenever they catch their prey, they can't get out. So it clamps them going towards their gut. So I'm gonna give this the best shot I possibly can like almost like steak him. So I'm gonna yeah. just start by getting behind the scales and angling my knife this way, just like I do every other fish. Right up into the head like that. This guy's gonna have some fat grouper cheeks. We're gonna try and get those as well. I'm gonna run right down the back of them right here. And this, I know it's a huge fish, he's 80 pounds and there's so much meat on this fish, but what you guys gotta keep in mind is that, you know, there's there's seven or eight of us just, just here at the shop that are gonna, gonna get a piece of this fish to take home with them to eat. Plus we have families and friends and nothing of this fish is gonna go to waste. It's all gonna get eaten. Holy smokes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come on the other side of this fish. See if I can't go right down the this side just so we don't lose any of the flesh, any of the good meat. Where's Reed the fishmonger when we need him? If you guys don't know Reed, go check him out. He is the best filet guy I know. I'm gonna get down like this just so I can see what I'm doing. Crawl in there. I'm about to. I just want to take my time, get this as perfect as I possibly can. Would you like me to like hold him? Yeah, if you held him from just sliding. I'm gonna cut it right here. Nice cut. Oh, that was crazy. Look at that, guys. That's a beautiful fillet. I don't see any parasites inside of it. I mean, it just, the whole thing looks perfect. It's very white. Um, we preserved it well in the cooler. That is just awesome. Guys, thank you for coming on this adventure with Chris Doyle and myself. It was one of the greatest we've been on, Chris. Sure has, sure was. And please hit that like button. Give me a comment. Tell me about one of your greatest adventures. 
hit the subscribe button. Or a fish that you want to catch. A fish that you want to catch. It helps our channel. And man, this is, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm but you know what we got to do, right? We got to do it again. Yeah, we got to keep jigging. That's right, baby. We got to jig on. See you guys.